Hello everyone, welcome to Vedantu's NCRT Solutions Class 11 and 12 where we discuss the NCRT exercises of all subjects by different teachers. So today I am here to give you the answers for the NCRT exercise questions of the chapter Thermodynamics from Class 11 Chemistry Topic. So yes, once again welcome to this topic and let's go to the question. Choose the correct answer. A thermodynamic state function is a quantity. So in the chapter thermodynamics, we are discussing two types of systems. Which are they? We have, we have not systems. We have two types of functions. We have state function and path function. What is the difference between the state function and path function? State functions are the functions which depend only upon the initial and final state of the system. Initial and final state of the system and that is independent on the path which followed by that system to get to that final state and whereas the path functions are the functions which depend upon the path by which that state have achieved clear clear yes depend upon the path so that is the difference between state function and path function so here they are they have asked for the correct answer about state function so they used to determine heat change you know, whose value is independent of path whose thermodynamic pressure volume work whose value depends on temperature only so here we can say the correct statement must be option two where it is saying whose value is independent of path we know what state functions are independent of path whereas path functions are depending upon the path clear Yes, for the process to occur under adiabatic condition, the correct condition is adiabatic condition. We know there is no heat exchange and nothing is happening there. So we can say for adiabatic condition, their Q must be zero. What is that? The third option is the correct answer for adiabatic condition. We know every time Q is equal to what? Zero, right? It was a simple question. I hope you understood the answer for this question. The enthalpies of all elements in their standard states are. So when we were discussing the enthalpy of formation, we are discussing the sentence. The sentence is there in the textbook. The enthalpies of all elements in their standard states are zero. It is considered as zero, right? Enthalpy of all elements in their standard state is known to be what? Zero. Clear? I hope you understood the answer for this question also. Delta U naught, that means the internal energy change of combustion of methane is minus X kilojoule per mole. The value of delta H naught is. So, we have to know the relationship between delta H and delta U for, to answer this question. So, we know we have the equation delta H is equal to delta U plus delta NRT right yes so the delta u value is given as minus x and we have to know what will be the delta n for the combustion of methane so we have to write the combustion of methane's equation so we can write it like ch4 plus we have the combustion equation for hydrocarbon like what ch hy plus x plus y by 4 x plus y by 4 o2 gives x co2 plus y by 2 h2 or by using this equation we can write the equation as ch4 plus 1 plus 1 which is equal to 2 o2 gives 1 carbon dioxide plus 2 molecules of water right so we can say what here the delta n value will be what 3 minus 1 right 3 minus 1 which will be equal to 2 correct yes okay so we have what the delta n value delta n value is number of gaseous products minus number of gaseous reactants so that will be what here we have it in gas this is liquid again gas gas so it will be like 1 minus 3 which is equal to minus 2 so we will get the answer delta h is equal to delta u minus 2 rt that means h value will be delta h value will be less than delta u value since we are we are subtracting something from the delta u value so we can say delta h value will be less than delta u naught this zero is here okay it's delta u naught okay so our answer must be option three which is less than delta u okay i hope you understood the answer for this question the enthalpy of combustion of methane graphite and dihydrogen are minus two sorry at 298 kelvin are minus 893.3 kilojoule per mole minus 393.5 kilojoule per mole and minus 285.8 kilojoule per mole respectively what is the enthalpy of formation of ch4 so first we have to write the equation for all these combustion reactions so first let's start with the methane so we have for hydrocarbons we have the general equation by by which we can find the enthalpy of combustion of CH4 as CH4 plus 2O2 gives CO2 plus 2H2O, 
right? Then we have graphite, so we can write C plus O2 gives CO2. Then we have for dihydrogen, which we can write H2 plus half O2 gives half O2 gives H2O. So we have the equation 1, 2, and 3 here. What we need to form is the enthalpy of formation of CH4. What will be the enthalpy of formation of CH4? C plus 2H2 gives CH4. Right? We need this equation. So what we have is we have carbon here in the reactant side and we have one hydrogen here. So first what we need to, need to do is we have to just multiply the equation number 3 into 2. What we are going to do? Equation number 3 into 2. Equation number 3 into 2. How it will be? Equation number 3 into 2 will be like 2H2 plus O2. 2H2 plus O2 gives 2H2O. And their delta H value will be getting doubled. So, we can write the new delta. Delta RH will be delta CH3 into Okay, I am writing the 3 as the third equation. Okay, so that combustion enthalpy into 2. That is how their enthalpy of reaction will be. And by the way, we are doing this this question based on Hess's law. Okay, yes, now we got what C is here. 2H2 is there in the fourth equation. Okay, so what we can do is we can just add this equation plus the fourth equation minus first equation because CH4 is there in the reactant side here. We need CH4 in the product side. That's why I'm get taking what minus. So our equation will be 2 plus 4 minus 1. We will get the equation as C plus O2 plus 2H2 plus O2 plus CO2 plus 2H2O gives CO2 plus 2H2O plus CH4 plus 2O2. We have to write it like, we can write it plus because I am taking what negative of that equation. So that reactant and product will be getting, getting reversed here. I am taking the product as what CH4 and 2O2 and reactants as CO2 and 2H2O as you can see here. Okay, now you can see CO2 here, CO2 here. They will cancel. 2H2O here, 2H2O here. Cancel. Oxygen here, oxygen here. 2 oxygen here. Cancel. And so, what is remaining? Carbon, 2H2 and CH4. Correct. Now, we can write, if I am writing this as the fifth equation, the delta RH of the fifth equation will, will be what? Will be what? Delta RH2 plus delta RH4 minus delta RH4. One. So, delta RH2 will be what? The graphite's formula. Graphite minus 393.5 minus 393.5 plus delta RH4 will be what? For hydrogen, we have to multiply that by 2. So, that will be 2 into minus 285 point, minus 285 point 8 minus the first one. Minus, minus 890 point Three. That is how you will be getting the answer. And I think you will be getting the answer as minus 74.8 kilojoule per mole will be the final answer for this question if you uh, do this thing. Okay. Yes. A reaction A plus C, A plus B gives C plus D plus Q is found to have a positive entropy change. The reaction will be, okay. So here they are asking us to check the spontaneity of a reaction. So to check the spontaneity of a reaction, we have the equation delta G equal to delta H minus T delta S. And how can we say, how can we say they have said delta S value is always positive. Delta S is greater than 0. And we can find some other thing also from the equation that it is given in the product side. It is given Q or heat. That means it is an exothermic reaction. So, we can say delta H value is again negative. So, we know what if delta G become negative then the reaction will be spontaneous or that reaction is possible we can say. So, if this value is negative and the delta S is positive then we can say this delta G will be negative at all temperatures. So, we can say the above reaction will be possible at every temperature, at any temperature it is possible will be the right answer for this question. So, here we are with the seventh question from the chapter. So, let's see the question. In a process, 701 joule of heat is absorbed by the system and 394 joule of work is done by the system. 
and what is the internal energy so we have the equation according to first law of thermodynamics we have the equation delta u equal to q plus w and we have the sign conversion if heat is absorbed by the system heat absorbed by the system then that sign will be positive heat released by the system heat released by the system then the sign will be negative work is done by the system work is done by the system then w will be negative clear and work is done on the system on the system then w will be positive this is how the sign conversion looks like okay yes so we can say what like here we have the equation delta u equal to q plus w so here you can see heat is absorbed by the system so we can write delta u equal to 701 positive 701 and work is done by the system so it will be negative so minus 701 minus 394 will be the answer for this question how much will be that 11 minus 4 which is equal to 7 right 7 plus 4 is what 11 and here we will be getting 0 then uh, 6 minus 3 3 so we will be getting 307 joule as the internal energy change for this question okay i hope you understood the answer for this one the reaction of cyanamide NH2CN with dioxygen was carried out in a bohm calorimeter and the delta U was found to be minus 742.7 kilojoule per mole at 298 Kelvin. Calculate the enthalpy change for the reaction at the same temperature and this uh, equation also is given. So, uh, we have given is delta U and what we have to find is delta H. So, we have the equation connecting delta H and delta U. That is nothing but delta H is equal to delta U plus delta NRT. So, first we have to find the delta N value that is number of gaseous products minus number of gaseous reactants. So, we can get it like 1.5, right? 1.5 minus 1 plus 1 plus 1.5 which is 2.5. Correct. So, we, we can get it like delta N value will be how much? Uh, not 1.5. We will be getting 2 minus 2.5. 2 minus 2.5 is what? 1 plus 1, right? So, 2 and 1 plus 1.5 is 2.5. So, we will be getting 0.5 or 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 as the answer here. Correct? Yes, liquid. We don't need to take what? The number of liquid substances. Clear? I hope you understood this one and we have to find the delta H value now. So, the delta H value will be delta U value minus 742.7 kilojoule per mole minus, minus what? Minus 1 by 2 into what is the R value? 8.314 R value is 8.314 joule per mole. So, we, can, we have to convert it into what? Kilojoule because it is given in kilojoule. So, I have to put 10 power minus 3 also here. So, 8.314 into 10 power minus 3 into temperature is 298. So, when you do this thing, when you finish this thing and you will get the answer as what? Minus 741.5 kilojoule per mole will be the answer for the delta H value or the enthalpy change for that reaction. Okay. I hope you understood the answer for this question. Calculate the number of kilojoule of heat necessary to raise the temperature of 60 gram aluminium from 35 degree Celsius to 55 degree Celsius. Molar heat capacity of aluminium is given. So, we have the equation here which is Q is equal to C into M into delta T. So, first we have to find the number of moles. So, what is the number of moles of aluminium required here? 60 divided by 27 moles of aluminium is there. So, 60 divided by 27 will be approximately 2.2 moles we can write. Okay. Yes. And the C value or the molar heat capacity is given as 24 and delta T will be how much? 55 minus 35 which is equal to 20 degrees Celsius and the change in temperature you can directly write it as what? 20 Kelvin also because it is we have taken the change in temperature not the exact temperature right so we can say what it will be 20k so the q value will be what is the c 24 into 2.2 into 20 will be the answer for this question so we will get it like 48 into 
2.2 sorry 48 into 22 will be the answer 48 into 22 will be the answer for this question so we can get it like 48 into 22 16 9 16 9 6 then 5 1056 or 1 1.056 kilo joule will be the answer for this question okay Calculate the enthalpy change on freezing of 1 mole of water at 10 degree Celsius to ice at minus 10 degree Celsius and delta H fusion is given, Cp of H liquid H2 and Cp of solid H2 is given. Okay, so what they have asked is uh, H2O, H2O freezing of 1 mole of water, yes, liquid at 10 degree Celsius to H2O at ice, ice, okay. So, that will be solid at minus 10 degree Celsius. So, that is what is asked here, the delta H of that one, okay. So, we can do this here and also we can do the same thing by doing how much? 0 degree Celsius, then H2O2. Uh, solid at 0 degree Celsius, then you can make it minus 10 degree Celsius. So, we can write this is delta H1, this is delta H2 and this is delta H3. So, according to Hess's law, according to Hess's law, I can write what delta H is equal to delta H1 plus delta H2 plus delta H3. So, first we need to find the delta H1 value. So, we can, I am writing it here. Okay, I hope you can see this thing. And delta H1 will be uh, 10 degree Celsius to 0 degree Celsius. That is nothing but liquid and the tempera temperature is changing as 10 degree is the temperature change. Correct. So, we can write what 753 that is for liquid, right? So, for liquid 75.3 joule per mole uh, per Kelvin is the answer. So, we can write it like 75.3 into what is the temperature change here? That is... 10 Kelvin. So, we can write it like 753, 753 Joule per mole per Kelvin will be the delta H1 value, right? And we have to find the delta H2. Delta H2 value will be how much? Delta H2 is from 0 degree Celsius liquid to solid. That is negative of delta H fusion. That is negative of delta H fusion. That is what we need here. So, that is 6.03 kilo Joule per mole. So, I can write it like what? Minus 6030 joule per mole per kelvin right joule per mole per kelvin per mole per kelvin yes then again then again we have to convert this solid at 0 degree to solid at minus 10 degree so again we can find the delta h3 as what for solid we have the cp as 36.8 and here the temperature changes minus 10 kelvin so we can write it like uh, 36.8 into minus 10. So, that must be minus 368 joule per mole per Kelvin will be the answer. So, we can write delta H is equal to 753 plus minus 6030 plus minus 368 will be the answer for this question. So, we can get it like what? 6030368 and we can get it like 8, 9, 3, 6. And we have to just uh, take 753 from this. 5, 4, 13 minus 7. 13 minus 7 is how much? 6, right? And 5. So, we will be getting minus 5, 6, 4, 5 or my. Yes. My, or we can write it like minus 5.5. 645 kilojoule per mole per Kelvin will be the answer for this question. Right? Clear? I hope you understood the answer for this question. Enthalpy of combustion of carbon uh, to carbon dioxide is 393.5 kilojoule per mole. Calculate the heat released upon the formation of 35.2 gram of carbon dioxide from carbon and dioxygen. It is given as C plus O2 gives CO2 and the value is given as minus 
393.5 kilo joule per mole as the delta H for this value. So we can say for combustion and making one mole of carbon dioxide for one mole or we can say 44 gram carbon dioxide how much value it needed minus 393.5 kilojoule per mole so that for 35.2 gram of carbon dioxide how much it will be needing minus 393.5 divided by 44 into 35.2 will be the answer for this question so we can get it like minus 341.8 kilojoule per mole sorry kilojoule will be the answer for this question okay Yes, I hope you understood the answer. Calculate the heat released for the formation of the smudge carbon dioxide from carbon and dioxygen. So we can write what? For 44 gram carbon dioxide, the smudge value is needed. And for 1 gram, that value divided by 44. So for 35.2 gram, that value into 35.2 will be the answer. Clear? Enthalpy of formation of CO of CO2, N2O and N2O4 are given and we have to find the value of delta RH for the reaction. That is the uh, question here. So we have to find this equation from the given data. So for what is given here? Formation of CO. So it will be C plus half O2 gives CO. That is the first equation here. Then we have here we will be having delta H1. Okay. We will be having what? Delta H1 here. Yes, because that is the first equation. Okay. Then we have CO2. Formation of CO2 will be C plus O2 gives CO2. For that, we will be having delta H2. That is the second equation. Then again, we have N2O. So, N2 plus half O2 gives N2O and we have delta H3 and that is the third equation. Then we have N2O4. So, N2 plus 2O2 gives N2O4. That is the fourth equation. So, that is delta H4. Clear? So, what we need is N2O4 plus 3CO. So, N2O4 we can get it from this equation. So, I am taking what? Inverse of the fourth equation. So, inverse of fourth equation will be like N2O4. Inverse fourth equation. Fourth equation, if I inverse the fourth equation, I can get the equation as N2O4 gives N2 plus 2O2. And what I, else I need in the reactant side? 3CO. So, I have to get what? Equation number 1 into 3. Inverse of inverse of equation 1 into 3. So, I can get it like what? 3CO. 3CO gives how, what? C, 3C plus 3 by 2O2. 3C plus 3 by 2O2. And here we can get the delta H4 minus delta H4 will be I am getting here. And here what I am getting equation number 1 into 3, right? So minus of equation number uh, delta H1 into 3. Clear because I am inversing the equation. Right? Then I need what? I need what? N2O is there in the product side. So, I am taking what? Equation number 3 as such. And 3 carbon dioxide I need. So, I am taking what? This equation number 2 into 3. Equation number 2 into 3. So, 2 into 3 will be what? 3C plus 3C plus 3O2 gives 3CO2. Clear? Yes. So, I am getting delta H2 into 3. Clear? Clear? And I have the second equation as such here. Second equation is, sorry, the third equation is what? Uh, N2 plus half O2 gives N2 plus half O2 gives N2O. Okay. Yes. Now I have the equation this as 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, what I need to do is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is what I need. Okay. So, equation number 1. N2O4. 2, 3CO. Plus 3. 3C plus 3O2. Plus N2 plus half O2. Gives N2 plus 2O2. Plus 3C plus 3 by 2O2. Plus 3CO2 plus N2O. That is what we are getting. Clear? Yes. So, we can write it or we can see here what 
three C here and three C here. They will both cancel each other. Three O two here th again. We can see um, yes, three O two plus point five O two. That is three point five here again. We can see what point five one point five plus two. That is again three point five. So we can cancel all the oxygens. Okay. Yes, and again we'll be getting uh, yes N two here again N two here. Okay, what is remaining? N two O four plus three C O gives three C O two plus N two O. What we need is the final equation will be like this. So for this equation, what we need to do is minus delta H four minus delta H four will be how much? Minus delta H four is minus nine point seven minus nine point seven plus equation number one into sorry yeah equation number one into three minus of minus of Yes, we have the value nine point seven here. So minus of minus one ten into three plus what plus what delta H two into three again the second one minus three ninety three plus minus of minus three ninety three into three plus what is the fourth one? Fourth one is uh, this thing eighty one. Okay. If you do this, you will get the answer for this question. Okay. If you know the answer, please comment comment down below this video. And yes, that is how you have to find the answer for this question. If you have any doubt, also please let me know through the comment section. N two plus three H two gives two NH three and delta uh, like the standard reaction enthalpy is given. What is the standard enthalpy of formation of NH three gas? So we know for the standard enthalpy of formation, we will be having the equation N two half of N two Plus, we will be having half of three by two H two gives what NH three. Clear, clear. What, what we need only three hydrogen here, right? Okay. So, uh, uh, out of three, uh, out of six, um, H three H two, we need only three. Clear. So that is how the equation will be. And just we can say what that this equation divided by two will be the standard enthalpy of formation. So standard enthalpy of formation of ammonia we can write it like delta R H naught divided by two or minus ninety two point four divided by two. It will be minus four uh, six point two minus forty six point two kilojoule per mole will be the standard enthalpy of formation of ammonia. Calculate the standard enthalpy of formation of CH3OH from the following data. So, from the question, we can find the or we can write the equation of the standard enthalpy of formation of CH3OH as carbon graphite plus 2H2 plus half of O2 gives CH3OH. That is how we can write the standard enthalpy of formation of CH3OH. That is what we need to find out from the given data so we know in the reactant side we need carbon we need hydrogen and we need oxygen so for that and also in the reactant side we need ch3oh everything is there in the three equation so i am taking equation number this as one two and three i need only one carbon so i am taking two okay and i need two hydrogen so i am just taking equation number three into two which i will be getting as two h2 plus O2 gives 2H2O so that the enthalpy of reaction will become minus 286 kilojoule per mole into 2. Okay. So what I need to do is I just need to take this equation as equation number 4. So what I need to do is equation number 2 plus equation number 4 minus equation number 1. Minus equation number 1 because I need CH3OH in the product side so i'll be getting the equation as c plus o2 c plus o2 that is c plus o2 plus 2h2 plus o2 plus 2h2 plus o2 plus i will be having co2 plus 2h2o co2 plus 2h2o since i have taken minus one it will be giving what CO2 plus H2O, CO2 plus H2O plus here I will be having CH3OH plus 3 by 2, CH3OH plus 3 by 2 O2. 
okay so here we have c plus 2o2 here we will be we can cut something here co2 is here co2 is here h2o is here and 2h2o is here okay just a minute uh, we have 2h2o here 1h2o yes here we have for ch3oh we'll be having 2h2o yes okay one more h2o will be here i forgot to write it so 2h2o and 2h2o cancel okay then what we'll be having what we'll be having uh yes we have c plus 2h2 plus 2o2 here gives ch3oh plus 3 by 2o2 so from 2 oxygen i have to minus what 1.5 oxygen so i'll be getting here 0.5 oxygen so c plus 2h2 plus half O2 gives CH3OH. That is the final equation I am getting. So, what I have to do is what? Just add these values. So, the 2. 2 value is minus 393 plus 4th one minus 286 into 2 minus minus 726 kilojoule per volt. So, you can get the answer as here. It will be minus 239 kilojoule per mole i guess you will be getting the answer as this okay i hope you understood the answer for this question if you have any doubt please let me know in the comment section calculate the enthalpy change for the process ccl4 gas gives carbon gas plus 4 cl gas and calculate the bond enthalpy of ccl4 in ccl4 gas okay so uh, it is given that delta h vaporization of ccl4 is given delta h atomization of carbon atomization of chlorine and standard enthalpy of formation of ccl4 is given so let's just elaborate these things what they have meant uh, like what they have meant by all these things so first let's let's write the standard enthalpy of formation of uh, ccl4 so we can write it like carbon solid plus 2 cl2 gas gives CCl4 liquid. Actually, CCl4 is found as liquid. So, we will get it like minus 135.5 kilojoule per mole is the answer for this one. Then we have delta H vaporization that is nothing but CCl4 liquid becomes CCl4 gas. Right? That is what is what vaporization. Okay. Now, we have what standard enthalpy of atomization of carbon. So, we can write it like carbon solid becoming carbon gas. Then, we have atomization of Cl2. So, we can write it like Cl2 gas becoming 2Cl gas. And what we need is the equation CCl4 gas gives C gas plus 4Cl gas. So, from this, we can have equation number 1 equation number two equation number three equation number four okay so we need four cl here so i am just taking this equation number four into two equation number four into two gives what equation number four into two will be two cl2 gas giving four cl gas so i got this four cl then i need what c gas so i am taking equation number three so carbon solid giving carbon gas now what i need is ccl4 gas which is in the reactant side so i can get it like what minus equation number two okay so i am just doing what this is equation number five and this one was equation number three right so i am just first time what i'm doing is equation number five plus three which is equal to what two cl2 plus carbon in solid state give 4 cl gas plus carbon gas so i got this thing this is sorted now i need ccl4 gas on the reactant side so for that i have to just take minus of equation number two what i need to take minus equation number two so this is equation number six so equation number six minus two gives what equation number six minus two will give 2 cl2 plus carbon in solid state plus equation number uh, yes what was that 6 minus 2 so minus 2 will be here i will be having ccl4 ccl4 gas on the reactant side and liquid on the product side so ccl4 gas okay then i can write it like gives 4 cl gas plus carbon gas plus 
CCL4 liquid. Now I have to remove the CCL4 liquid from here. I need only this thing. Okay. So to remove CCL4 liquid from there, I just need to negate. Take minus equation number 1. So this is equation number 7. So next I am doing 7 minus 1. So I will get it like 2Cl2 plus carbon sulfide plus CCL4 gas plus equation number 1. We have CCL4 liquid here. CCL4 liquid. It gives what? 4Cl plus C gas plus CCL4 liquid plus plus carbon solid plus 2Cl2. Carbon solid plus 2Cl2. So here comes here we can just get it sorted. Yes. Yes, now we got CCL4 gas gives 4Cl plus carbon gas. So, here we got the answer. Now, what we have done, only thing that we have multiplied here is this thing 4 into 2. So, we can write it like what? We can write it like 5 plus 3 minus 2 minus 1. What we have done? 5 plus 3 minus 1 minus 2. Or we can say 5 is 4 into 2. So, 4 into 2 plus 3. 4 into 2 plus 3 minus 1 minus 2. If you do this one, you will get the answer. The answer must be, we will get the answer as 1304 kilojoule per mole will be the answer if you do that. And for the CCL for the bond, uh, like bond strength, we can write it like what? 1304 divided by 4. So that will be what? 3, 2, then 6, 3, 26 kilojoule will be the answer for that question. Okay, I hope you understood the answer for this one. For an isolated system, delta U equal to 0, what will be the delta S? Yes. So, we know for an isolated system, their delta U will be 0 and there is no heat exchange with, with the surrounding. No heat exchange with the surrounding, right? We know these things. But, but for a uh, spontaneous reaction, for a spontaneous isolated reaction, spontaneous reaction if this reaction is spontaneous we can say their delta s will be increasing or the entropy will be increasing there so we can say delta s will be greater than zero for an isolated system at delta u equal to zero okay i hope you understood the answer for this one if you have any doubt please let me know through the comment section for the reaction at 298 Kelvin, 2A plus B gives C. Delta H is given, that is 400 kilojoule per mole and delta S is 0.2 kilojoule per Kelvin per mole. At what temperature will that reaction become spontaneous considering delta H and delta S to be constant over the temperature range? Okay, so we know for a reaction to be spontaneous that delta G value must be less than 0. And we have the equation for delta G as delta H minus T delta S. When that delta G will be negative, when delta H less than or equal to T delta S, right? So, we can just write delta H less than or equal to T delta S. If it is like this, then we can write, we can say what delta G will be less than 0. So, at the point in temperature, we can say to find the temperature, we can just take it like delta H become equal to T delta S. After that, after that, the temperature, if the temperature is increasing, the delta H will become or the delta G will become negative. So, let's find that temperature. So, delta H is given which is 400 kilojoule and temperature is what we need to find and we have delta s as point so temperature will be 400 into sorry 400 divided by 0.2 which is 2000 kelvin will be the answer here if the temperature go beyond 2000 kelvin the reaction will become spontaneous okay for the reaction 2c chlorine gas gives chlorine molecule what are the signs of delta h and delta s so, this is very basic question we have and we know what during a bond formation we know that was chlorine chlorine and now they are forming a bond in between that is what is happening here in this equation. So, during bond formation some amount of energy is always released so we can say that will be an exothermic process so that delta H will be always negative during bond formation clear and delta s value here we know there were two different species now they are joining and new bonds are forming more arrangement is becoming there so entropy is changing or entropy decreasing so that we can say delta s value will be again negative for here clear 
For the reaction 2A plus B gives 2D, delta U value is given, delta S value is given. They have asked us to find the delta G value and predict whether the reaction occurs spontaneously or not. So first we know the equation for delta G naught, it is delta H naught minus T delta S naught right so we have to find the delta h value for that only we have given delta u and we we know what delta h naught is equal to delta u plus delta n t correct yes so we have delta u value as minus 10.5 kilojoule per mole kilojoule plus delta n value will be 2 minus 3 which is equal to minus 1 so minus 1 into r value 8.314 into 10 power minus 3 into temperature 298 Kelvin because it is happening at the standard temperature pressure condition. So, we will get the answer for delta H as minus 12.978 kilojoule as the answer for delta H. Now, let us do uh, delta G value. Delta G is equal to minus 12.978 kilojoule uh, minus temperature is we have sorry, sorry, sorry. Here we have the temperature as uh, minus 298 into minus of 298 into delta S value is minus 44.1 into 10 power minus 3 because I am taking it in kilojoule into 10 power minus 3 is yes into 10 power minus 3 okay because it is given in joule okay this is what i am getting in kilojoule so i will get it like what delta g value i'll be getting 0. 0.0.164 kilojoule 0. 0.164 kilojoule here the delta g naught value that we have got is positive if delta g value is positive means the reaction will be a non spontaneous reaction what is that a non spontaneous reaction is happening here clear Yes, we know what delta G naught value is less than 0, reaction spontaneous. Greater than 0, reaction non-spontaneous. I hope you understood this one. The equilibrium constant for the reaction is given. What will be the value of delta G naught? We know the relationship which is uh, relating uh, the delta G and um, our, our what equilibrium constant. So, the equation is minus RT ln K or also I can write minus 2.303 RT log K. So, I can write it like minus 2.303 into R value will be, it is given in joule. So, R value 8.314 into temperature is given as 300 into log 10. Log 10 power base 10 is exactly 1. So, minus 2.303 into 8.314 into 300 will be the answer for this one. So, we will be getting 552727 joule per mole or we can say minus 5.527 kilo joule per mole will be the answer here. I hope you understood this one. If you have any doubt, please let me know. Comment on the thermodynamic stability of NO and NO2. Given that, we have the reaction for, for the formation of NO and NO2. If you look at the reaction enthalpy, you can see for the formation of NO, delta H is positive and for the formation of NO2 is, it is negative. So, if we need to give some energy to form something, that means that is not that stable. So, we can say NO is unstable or less stable compared to NO2. That will be what? Stable because that delta H value is negative. When it comes to NO, the delta H value is positive. Clear? We can interpret it this like. Okay. Yes? Okay. I hope you understood this one. If you have any doubt, please let me know through the comment section. Calculate the entropy change in the surrounding when one mole of H2O is formed under standard conditions. Delta HF naught is given. We have to find the delta S. So, delta S we know that is what Q reversible by temperature. We can find it by using this equation. Right? So, to find the Q reversible, what we can do is minus of delta H formation, standard delta H formation. So, we can write it like minus of minus 286 kilojoule per mole. That is equal to 286000 joule per mole is the or joule is the Q reversible and delta S, we, we can write it like 286 triple zero divided by temperature temperature is given and under standard condition so that must be 298 kelvin so we can get the answer as 959 
Joule per Kelvin per mole will be the answer. Yes. Okay. So that's the answer for the uh, what the entropy change in the surrounding. Clear. I hope you understood this one. And this was the last question from the exercise part of this chapter. And if you have any doubt, please let me know. And I'll see you with the next chapter again soon. Uh, yes. So that's it for today. Bye bye and take care.